Hey everybody, welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host Matt. I'm joined by Martin. How are you doing, Martin? Good, thanks, Matt. How are things for you today? <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about that. Uh, all right, so we got a little bit of a story. We have now tried to do this podcast at least three times. Once in Jitsi, once on Skype. Skype just restarted for no apparent reason. Um, and not even restarted, just completely crashed. So if it does it again, I don't even know what's healthy. We'll try, maybe we'll try Jitsi again. Um, and now we're doing a third time. So my whole day has just been utter crap. So Martin, regale us with your tales of what you've done on Linux this week. Um, all I've been doing is uh, playing Cyberpunk 2020 um, using Google Chrome. So it just streams it through. Um, I paid £50 for the game, but I mean, it was on offer. So I've got a controller and a Chromecast Ultra free, um, which usually costs about £19. So it's well worth it, um, just to save on no downloads of updates, which it's going to have because it's quite buggy at the moment. So it's quite a, a reasonable experience um, streaming. It's obviously nice and easy because I could just stream it to my phone or tell it whenever I want. How about yourself? What have you been up to, Matt? Well, I've been <laughs> trying to get my microphone set up to work uh, pretty much all week um to varying success i've pretty much got it down okay when i'm making like a video like a local video but i have not succeeded when it comes to any type of conference call you know with skype jitsi we tried i tried zoom with somebody else it's just not working <laughs> so um i i don't know what the hell i'm gonna do i'm probably going to end up either switching back to my other microphone which is a um a USB mic. Uh, and if I have to do that, I'm going to be very disappointed. But what am I going to do? I mean, <laughs> this is this is what this is what I use a microphone for, and it won't do it. It's just it's it's not good. Um, I've also been playing around with um, Xmonad, which is a a different window manager. Uh, DT does you know, likes that quite a lot. So I've been trying to play around with it mostly and successfully. Um, because that's just the way my life has been going lately. It's just one thing after another. Um, like I can't get for the longest time I couldn't get a you know like a bar or anything. In it. So it's just it's been an, a painful week in Linux for the most part. Um, so yes, that's my that's my uh, tales of woe. Um, so let's just jump into the contact information. Um, so in, in other words, if I start a rant on anything just know that that's the reason why uh if you uh want to get in contact with us you can do so on twitter i'm at mtwb martin smartin twit to you uh you can follow and find these links in the show description or in the description on youtube you can also follow the show itself at the linux cast on twitter you can follow us and subscribe to all of our feeds and such at the linuxcast.org that just transfers you to our anchor page because i'm much too lazy to have an actual website maybe someday you can contact us via email at the linuxcast at gmail.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the linuxcast. And also ensure you subscribe to us on YouTube where you'll find that I do da almost daily epi or da episodes, daily videos on mostly nonsense, but they're fun to watch if uh, you can get past the fact that I don't know actually anything about Linux, apparently. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I, it's funny, I've been using Linux for three and a half, almost four years now, full time. And just when I think, you know, I, I'm pretty good at this Linux thing. Something like this audio stuff or the Xmonad stuff I've been going through or uh, the, any, th any number of things this week. is just, oh, I'm, a, I'm still a complete noob. <laughs> um, so, oh, that's something to surprise you, definitely. I must admit, I'll just stick to USB on my mic. Yeah, I probably will end up doing that too, but whatever. Um, that'll just make me more angry. Um, so... <laughs> Um, jumping into the news of the week, we both kind of chose the same kind of thing because one's kind of a result of the other. So I'm going to go first. Yeah. yeah um, this this past week, uh, Red Hat announced that they were basically abandoning straight up CentOS Linux and to focus on their the rolling release version of CentOS, CentOS Steam. Um, now, for normal Linux users, this is not a big, huge deal. No. Because, you know, if you're just a regular Linux user, chances are using a, a rolling release isn't that big a deal, or you just you, use Ubuntu. But CentOS is like the 
if it if it's not the biggest, it's like the second biggest um, Linux distribution in like uh, in the enterprise, um, and that's a big deal there because they don't like to do upgrades in the enterprise, right? So um, this has pissed a lot of people off this week. Um, so some of the groups I'm in on Facebook have just been going crazy on it. There's a couple uh, like Discord servers and a couple IRC chats that I've been following. Um, they're just not really happy. Apparently, Red Hat, which is now owned by IBM now. Um, has done this because they're, um, uh, I, I mean, they say they want to do it because being on the bleeding edge of updates or whatever is appropriate for cloud compete computing. But really what I think what most people think that this is really about is the money because CentOS is not a supported distro there. You can't buy support for it. But it's based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is completely paid support. So what they, I think, what most people think is that they have abandoned st the stable version of CentOS so that these corporations move from CentOS to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is um, probably not what's going to happen because um, they'll either go to Ubuntu or they'll move to the thing yeah. that Martin's going to talk about. So, Martin, why don't you tell us about your link because it's directly related to this. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it's just a shame, especially for people that set up their own web servers recently and they've just realised that they haven't got much um, life left in it. Um, yeah, so um, out of the fire comes a phoenix, so to speak. So uh, Gregory M. Kurtzer, who was one of the creators of CentOS, um, has said that he, it, well, it doesn't seem to have liked the shift in direction, um, which was announced by Red Hat, Um so Rocky Linux is a community enterprise operating system designed to be 100% bug for bug compatible with Red Hat Linux. Now that so CentOS has shifted direction. Um, with CentOS uh, being upstream to Red Hat Enterprise, um, many will be forced to, like you said, switch to SUSE, Ubuntu, or even Enterprise. <laughs> If they don't like it, so I mean that's good. I mean, obviously people are, are, are going to be forked, but um, this is good news ahead for people who are totally just worried or just don't, don't want to pay for the support. Again, I mean, you can use Ubuntu, which I, I think it's relatively. I'd like to think it's even as server friendly as it is for the uh, desktop environment so that that's good news but yeah I, I've, I've saw a lot of the grief and comments at people it's mainly uh let's let, let's let's face it, it's a cash grab isn't it whichever way you look at it all right well, i mean we kind of had to know that this was coming because of um when ibm bought red hat ibm's gonna do whatever they can to make our yeah you know rel uh you know as big a money maker as possible Right, so I mean, they were always going to. There was always worries that CentOS was just going to be completely abandoned, or you know, shoved off onto the community or whatever. Um, so I don't think it's all that surprise. I don't think it's personally surprising, but it, I I can understand why it, it makes so many people look, you know angry about it because I mean, it, it just especially. So like they just came out with CentOS eight, I think, and they originally promised updates to that till like twenty twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, and they've reneged on that, and it's only going to be till the like, January or something. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it, end uh, of thirty um, first of December twenty one. Oh, so next year, but still, mm -hmm. that's that's a big difference between that and twenty twenty nine. Um, yeah, and especially when you're yeah. like, I mean, chances are they would have just upgraded. I mean, a lot of a lot of businesses wouldn't have upgraded it to it yet, anyways. But some of them have. And the fact that now they've went through this upgrade process, you know, which is, you know, a big deal. Yeah. And they're only going to get support until, you know, the end of next year is just, I mean, it would make me angry too if, you know, I wasn't on a rolling release already um, and dealt with servers all the time. So, um, yeah, I think as well, the, the anger, it's, it's just literally come out the blue. Oh, by the way, we're doing this, this, um, support lend in uh, 21 instead of uh, 29 i mean there's a, a lot of people businesses and, and your normal user it's, it's put a, a lot of money into this to get it up and running and suddenly they're just so i, I can understand the the anger i mean like, mm -hmm. like you say it doesn't affect the normal desktop user unless i've got 
<coughs> surface and things like that in the house. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, th- I think it's mainly the, the the timing. It was just there. You go right, mm-hmm. c- cut off now. Like Merry Christmas, right? <laughs> um, well, I might as well have just released the news on Christmas Day to uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, well, I mean, at least they did it this year because I mean it's 2020. So I mean, they should have expected it to go wrong because it's you know 2020. Well, um, yeah. Have you ever used CentOS on like a, a desktop? Because I've never. No. Used it. No, I must admit I haven't. Um, I've used Red Hat, but that's been, man, uh, like tw- probably close to twenty years ago when I was d- dabbled in Linux right out of high school. Yeah, like I got like one of those books you'd find at Barnes and Noble or whatever that you know. <laughs> Red Hat Linux, like version 7.6 or something. I still have the book. It's over on my dresser. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, anyways, so that's interesting. All right. Um, so that's the news. Let's move into the main topic for the week, which is Martin's. Martin, why don't you tell us what we're talking about? Yep. So it's seven, System76 and Linux hardware vendors. Martin, you still there? Yep, sorry. Um, so it's That's okay. <laughs> system... I just assumed that Skype quit again, so... I mean... <laughs> no, I had a message on WhatsApp, and I'm using the same um, thing, so I think it just muted me. So, it's sorry. System76 and Linux hardware vendors. I think you're muted again. Oh. Am I back? <laughs> I've, I've transferred my bad whatever... <laughs> Over to you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Horrible. I'm a back now, Matt. Sorry. You are back. Yes. Oh, bloody heck! Here we go. You have you sent you've sent me all your bad news virus. Right, <laughs> System Seventy Six and Linux hardware vendors. It seems to mute you right after you say that sentence. So don't say that sentence again because <laughs> you're still okay. muted. That's weird. It does not. Let me let, let me see if it works for me. System seventy six and Linux hardware vendors. Am I muted now? <laughs> no, you're fine. That's really oh. weird. You, you you say that sentence and then all of a sudden it just goes completely blank. So um so we're gonna talk about system seventy six and Linux hardware vendors. Um, expensive laptops, expensive computers. Um, but really cool, awesome computers. So, um, are you gonna buy one of these, Martin? I wish, but no. Um. I would like one. They're beautiful uh, pieces of kit, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm I'm just not. I just could not warrant it. Really, could not warrant the the hefty price tag. I mean, they're they're all gorgeous, lovely things, but let's face it, you could you could get a lot more bang for your buck going to maybe um, Dell, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Or also Tuxedo, tuxedocomputers.com. They seem to have some um, reasonable priced ones. I mean, obviously, you haven't got the top spec of System 76, and obviously, <coughs> the. but, yep, I'm looking at one called a... Sorry, I can't even see. Oh, Tuxedo... Book XP 14, Generation 12. Um, but, yeah. I mean, would you buy a System 76 if you had 10 grand spare? <laughs> um, no. Um, mostly because I then I would just build, build my own computer, which, yeah. I've, which I've done. Um, it, it just would make more sense to me, but I, I guess if... You didn't want to build your own computer. You could spend that kind of money. Um, when I was looking around for a new computer, I looked at the System76 stuff because they do have some stuff around, you know, $1,000, $1,200. Um, mm-hmm. But it's always, it's all, it's pretty low end and you pay a pretty hefty price on top of like the actual parts for just having them put it together or whatever, whatever their fees are. Um and I mean that kind of I mean it really kind of brings up the a, a good a, a point is that um there are there seems to be a, a really big gap in the middle of the market um you know the price market you know yeah in the low end you have like a the Pinebook Pro or whatever 
and that's like like 200 bucks and then you have nothing for ages and ages until you get to like nine hundred dollars and a thousand dollars and ten thousand dollars um there's not a really good option for, at things like five hundred dollars or you know six hundred dollars those are the kind of there's a reason why windows laptops rule everything is because you can go to best buy or whatever um and buy you know a six hundred dollar laptop and it'll last you for uh, you know six or seven years you know yeah so i mean yeah, um, I, I think that's the biggest problem with system 76 is just that they're too expensive but i also understand i mean it's really hard to be a small business like that because you don't have the margins of like you know an apple or an hp or something so you, you kind of have to charge those things but that also kind of you know turns so many people away because most people the vast majority of people don't spend a thousand dollars on their computer they spend six hundred dollars or three hundred dollars or something you know yeah like you say if you if you've got like a, a a grand or so to spare i mean you, you and you've got the know know how, you just start upgrading it yourself bit by bit. I mean, mm-hmm. soft as it sounds, I've had this computer since what nineteen ninety three. It's obviously not the same computer, but I've just ch- changed this, changed the power supply, motherboard, things like this on my main rig. Um, but I, I can do that, and like you, you know from you. you doing your own pc when you know something's wrong it's oh well this wasn't sitting right or i've got this there mm-hmm. uh, but yeah i mean in terms of laptop i mean i've gone to the dell.com you've got the option to sort it by operating systems linux for the laptops unless i've clicked something wrong and it's just not showing me anything everything's just windows 10 but yeah i mean lovely computers things like that um, one thing to mention is, um, did you hear about that Tsar Reason? It was an independent supplier. Oh, the one in California that shut down? Yeah, that was a, a, a right shame. I, I heard some really good news about theirs, but yeah, just store closing, got a, a thing on the site, all warranties avoid. I mean, the question, the question there is like, it, was that because of, you know, nobody's ever heard of them or more because, you know, it's 2020 in the pandemic, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's shutting a lot down a lot of businesses. Everyone's having a hard time, but at the end of the day, when things like this happen, people concentrate on the comforts. So they'll go and get a, a decent telly and they'll get themselves a decent laptop, something that they're going to carry on with. But, yeah, I mean, I obviously hope... Um, they're quite upfront about it, so they've they've put it all down to COVID and slow down in the market. I'm guessing it's like getting parts over and things like that. So, yeah, it's a shame for those. But yeah, System Seventy Six, the Gallagher Pro, is another lovely laptop which I can't afford. I should just record this um, stuff we, we we can't afford or, or would not pay. But like you say, um, yeah, Pinebook Pro, I'd, I'd recommend that. All right, so there, the laptops from seventy seventy six really bother me because, so. well, they don't like design or build their own laptops yet. I mean, they're they're planning on it, but they're not there yet. So these are all just like, um, there's like a company in China that does, um, like they don't sell directly to consumers; they sell to these boutique you know yeah computer oh, makers yeah. right and that's what these are so you but could be you could get this exact same computer with the like, windows on it you, you know with a different brand name on it um and if i'm not going to get something that's unique and built for you know like linux or whatever um these prices are just kind of a little too expensive it's just i mean i it, i know we keep coming back to the same uh you know argument like this is too expensive this is too expensive we're, we're just i mean to be fair, when with the prices and the laptops, I literally did think there was obviously hand assembled, but not like on a a, a batch or or things like that. I thought there was literally in the System Seventy Six factory and worked on by the, the team there, not just um, essentially rebadged with a different chassis. 
Yeah, their their desktop ones are like that. They they've de designed those themselves. Um, and I know that they're working on a, a a a laptop that they've designed, but it's not out yet. These are all just like you know, like you said, rebadged um, laptops, and and that's. <laughs> I mean that's okay, but their cheapest laptops nine hundred and forty nine dollars, um, and and it's not like it's not like you, and 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 that's okay. I mean if you're, it, it makes, you, if you went to a like a Windows, if you went to you know your local electronics store and bought a Windows with these specs on it, maybe you'd pay around the same thing, but you'd also get the like the the backing and support of a of a huge huge company. You probably have a longer warranty that you don't have to pay for, yeah. um, and you'd probably be able to take it like into the store or something and have them do service on it. Whereas, like with anything you buy from sixty seven systems seventy six, I'm sure they have great support, but you'd have to ship that out, you know. Yeah. And who knows if you're even shipping it to them? You might ship it to that, you know, company in China or wherever. Um, so it'd be, it, the price it just just adds to the waiting time, doesn't it? Especially yeah. when they, they're just going to do them in batches. They're not just going to order 10. They're, they're going to order 50. If some people went crazy on it. They, they wouldn't meet demand. I mean, ideally, as, as time goes on and more Linux adopters, as then, like you say, building them in their own factory and uh, getting, getting a bit more mass production, even though these are mass produced. But just in the, in batches. Uh, have you, have you got a laptop yourself? Sorry, or, or did you just use your? Um, well, your I have I have rig? a couple. I have a I have a old Dell, it's like seventy five hundred or something Inspire on. Um, I use that on my standing desk that never moves. And mm -hmm. then the one that I do when I take when I go about and about is like a really old um, IBM ThinkPad T four hundred or something. Uh, I got it on eBay for like eighty bucks. Um, so I, that that's the one I use. It just it, it's just running a a an Arch installed. I use it usually use it to, to test distros most of the, most of the time. Um, the the keyboard's crap, and I need to replace the keyboard. But yeah, I have a I have a laptop. Um, like my mom and dad, they have they. I can't get them to switch to Linux. I, I've I've tried. Um, <laughs> but that they, they have uh they're big Dell fans, so that we always buy the the when we do a new. Um, a new computer in the house for them. They always get a uh, a Dell. Oh man, I wish we we should do an episode uh, when we come back next year on on getting your relatives to switch to Linux because it's a pa it's a painful process. <laughs> but I mean, uh, with, with the ThinkPads, I, I would love one to be fair because they're easy to get to, easy to upgrade mm -hmm. the older models. Um, I, I would like one. I, I have got an in. Dell Inspiron, which I bought, and I just literally cracked that open, um, stuck an SSD in, and, and got a new chip for forty quid, uh, and it's it's brilliant. No, the th the ThinkPads tend to last forever. They're made. I mean, that's why a lot of businesses use them, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it just when when you buy like a like a, a Dell, um, their hinges. I've never had a Dell laptop that the hinges didn't go bad on. I mean, like, it doesn't matter. It, and it's even worse on the ones that are like two in ones, the ones that like fold over and become a tablet or whatever. Those hinges like always die like within a couple of years. Like the, the one I have, it will open, but it, like it sounds painful when it does. And my, and my mother has the exact same computers. Her, 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 the hinges on hers like crack. All the time, it's it's horrible, and you and you can't get, you can't get um replacement parts for those things either. It's really, uh, it's really disappointing. Like that'd be another thing that would worry me about. Like, if I were gonna pay these these prices on System Seventy Six, just to get back to the kind of the topic, yeah. um, if I was gonna pay those prices, I'd want to be able to do you know some upgrades on my own. So I, like you can probably change the memory and stuff, but you're not gonna be changing the CPU on any of those things because you know that. That's just not the way that stuff's going to work. And you're not going to, I mean, you'd think because they're, it's kind of really niche, you wouldn't be able, you're not going to be able to go on like on, on eBay or whatever and say, you know, I need a new, a new keyboard for this thing. 
Um, I mean, no. you're probably not going to be able to do that. I mean, especially, I mean, especially in the Linux community, where I mean, we're very much do-it-yourselfers, you know. So, I mean, if something goes wrong, and this stuff, chances are, you you're going to want to do the service yourself. Um, and finding parts is probably going to be a pain in the rear. Yeah, true. I didn't even think about that. Hopefully, System Seventy Six doesn't do the all all the uh, soldering the memory in and things like that and making it super hard yeah, I'm to not get sure they, to. I'm not sure. I, I I wouldn't know if they did that or not. Um, the I mean, the re- real question would be was I mean, because let's say you buy one of these, say you spend twenty five hundred dollars on a laptop, you want that thing to last a long time, you know? Yeah. And I mean, when something goes wrong. You're either so you're either going to have to pay them for support, which is, you know, that's not unusual for a computer company. But you know, you'd want to be able to know that if you wanted to do that service yourself or take it to like a, a um like a local computer shop or something, that they'd be able to get the parts. Um, and that would really work. Buying from some place niche like this would really bo- worry worry me about being able to get those parts, even if you went somewhere to have it done for you. So, I mean, that's one thing that. Um, I just, it's, it's always kind of been in the back of my head, like, you know, uh, you know, because these are so expensive, I want to have this option and I'm not sure I'm going to yeah. have this option. So it, if I were going to, buy, if I were going to buy a, a computer with Linux installed on it, I would buy from Dell or Lenovo or whatever. Yeah. Because I know it could get, Dell just sells a, a Windows PC with Linux on it. You know, that's basically all that is. If you need sure. a part from them, you just call Dell up and you can get a part. Um, or you can buy, you know, any amounts of parts on uh, like eBay or whatever because I mean, they're popular computers. Yeah, and you've got third third party vendors. I, I picked up a keyboard for my Dell. I think it it was, it was something like ten pound fifty brand new. And it's like it's crazy. Yeah, there's but a like, like you say, you're not going to get that from System Seventy Six. You're going to have to. Uh, get that shipped over to you and at a, at a good cost as well it, it, you're going to be paying about 50 quid i'd say easily but yeah and again it, it, it depends how much you, you do use it but like you say you're you long term you, you want to get out of it as much as possible and, and get that use if you spend a lot of money on a, on a laptop you want to last last in a good five six years and squeeze past that a, a bit more as well but yeah I think we, we both would love one at the end of the day not not because we cheap we just couldn't justify that yeah that price uh, maybe just... if we had unlimited money you know it'd be nice just to you know even though you have those worries you you'd still want to because I mean you want to support these small yeah, places that you know sell Linux computers because you want Linux and Linux on hardware to succeed but it's just yeah you know, It'd be so nice. I mean, it'd be really cool. Is is if System Seventy Six had a laptop that was like four ninety nine, you know? Well, maybe off the back of the uh, Point Book Pro, maybe they're just thinking, you know what? Maybe we could do something like this. Just yeah. your your budget end and and the popularity of the um, new um, Raspberry Pi with the keyboard and everything mm-hmm. in things like that. Maybe that they might just think, Let, let's just give it a try. Do it at five hundred and, and and see what we get, and who knows? Another five ten years, the, the prices should be dropping down and, and using arm more. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's looking good, definitely. All right. Well, that was an interesting conversation. Let's go ahead and jump into our apps of the week. Martin, what was your app of the week? Right. If you bear with me, two seconds. Sorry. Yep. So, got to get it right. So it's O two. O20 Word, which is available on Flathub, uh, link in the show notes. It's basically a word processor that's a clone of Word. Well, I say clone, it, it literally is the same looks and everything like that. Obviously, in-depth features and stuff like that you, you can't use. So you can do all your creating your Word documents. Um the good thing I like is um, it's got an auto save straight away, so you can pick up from what you was last typing. Um, it, and it even has a syntax highlighting for mm. developers, so if you're doing your code and things like that, you can use it on that. But it's, it's quite a good little 
and word clone to be fair and, and like i say that the best thing is you just open it up you've got your recent documents as most things but it brings you up to full screen for the, the current document you're working on so, so that's my app of the week how about yourself Matt? all right so i mentioned mine last week a little bit when i was talking about what i'd been doing um i've been trying to t- kind of divorce my uh uh, things that I use cross browsers so that I, everything's kind of independent. And one of those things is obviously bookmarks. And um, I could have went through and wrote, written like a script or whatever for D menu or Rofi or whatever to um, get into my bookmarks. But there's actually a program called Buku B U K U B U K U. Um, the link is also in the show notes. Um, and basically, what this does is it just allows you to create a database of your. Um, bookmarks and you can go through and put tags and descriptions and comments and everything right in the database with them and then you can assign those things to a you want know, an app launcher like d menu or rofi or u launcher or um alfred i think is alfred alfred or albert whichever one's the ones that want on linux this would also work on like i think on windows and mac as well um and it's just really easy you just assign it to whatever launcher you want to use or you can do it in the terminal or whatever and you can with a key binding, just access all of your your bookmarks, and they will go through and then open up in your default browser. So you can, if you want to uh, switch browsers all the time, like I seem to be doing all the, you know, because I get to, like my bank website won't work on Firefox at all, <laughs> um, because banks apparently are still trying to do their websites in GeoCities or something. I don't know. It's just horrible. Well, uh, their, their ATMs run on Windows I mean, like, XP still, so... Yeah. <laughs> it really makes you want to trust putting your financial information in one of those things, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> those things have definitely not been updated in a while. <laughs> well, definitely not. It's too costly for them. Well, yeah. I, like, come on, man. Just hire me. I'll put some Linux on it. Uh, maybe you won't want to hire me because the way I've been working with Linux lately, you probably don't want to because everything would go wrong. Oh dear. Um. All right. So that was a. You know, we made it to a half an hour. I was. I was kind of concerned that we'd um, uh, like Skype would cr- close or crash or something. <laughs> uh. Again, knock on wood because we're not done yet. Anyways. Um, oh, that's it. It's been a long day. <laughs> so um, I. I bl- so this is either it's going to be this week, this episode here, or next week will be our last episode of the year. Um, if this is our last episode, uh, make sure everybody has a safe and happy holiday and all those things. Um, we may end up, because we may end up doing another one. Uh, we'll talk about that off air. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, you can find all the information at the top of the episode. You can also make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube because the YouTube channel is actually kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say we're going viral or anything, but we got, you know. We're getting new subscribers every day and lots of views, and so it's kind of cool. Anyways, um, stuff well done. we'll see you, see you next week. Excellent. See you later, guys. Take care. Yep, sorted. You still there, Matt? I thought I'd lost you just at the end then.